Scott from My Life's Reward here. Fred and I are going to backpack the pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. And uh, it's going to be several nights, I think four nights, five days. And uh, so we're going to have to pack in everything, uh, our sleeping arrangements, food. And uh, so I have it all laid out for you and I'll go over it. Before going through the backpacking items, let's just look at the route. The planned route is from Grand Sable Visitor Center to the Munising Visitor Center, 42 miles as planned here. Day one, that Grand Sable Visitor Center will be to the first campsite of the Asabo East Campground. And uh, a little shorter day, six to seven miles. And then that campground to the Pine Bluffs Campground. This will be our most miles in any day. Uh, it looks like about 11 and a half miles. And then Pine Bluffs to Chapel Beach. Looks like lots of elevation changes and lots to see during uh, this day here. And then from Chapel Beach to Miners Beach. Looks like a lot of similar elevation changes as the day before and lots of sights to see here too. And then Miners Beach to the Munising Visitors Center. And here we're going across a lot of fall areas, which we expect a lot of creek crossings, river crossings. This is everything that I'm planning on taking with me on the trip. It looks like a lot. This right here is my duffel for there and back. So this, I'm gonna remove this from the table because this is really going to remain, this is for the hotel that we're staying at the night before. And then this will be for clothes to change into after we get off the trail. So we'll remove this from the table. This is what remains and this is everything, at least at this moment that I plan on taking with me. And let me go through this. In the center of the table, I have the very back black roll there is my goose down or my duck down quilt. This is a Z-Pack two-person tent. Then I've got my Thermarest air mattress. In the orange bag, I have a goose down jacket. So that'd be probably everything I'd be sleeping with. Here I have my change of clothes as I'm on the trail. I have a couple of t-shirts, uh, some socks, some, uh, some undies. And then a compression bag to put the dirties in to keep them separate from everything else. This gray little bag is a rain cover for the backpack. I may take that out if the rain forecast changes. Right now it shows two days of rain out of the five days. This is the backpack. Uh, this is the Laurel Mountain backpack. I think it's the Exodus. That's what I used on the shorter short trail. This portion here is more or less the kitchen. The gray bag there, tank of fuel here, the pot and the bag that the pot goes into, the chat stove, some lighters, even though that has an igniter on it, I just need to, I think I need to have some lighters just in case. Some water containers. Uh, the blue one there is uh, a Brita, it has a filter on it in case this one maybe develops a hole but one of these two may come out uh, because Fred might have one that we don't want to redundantly pack. The Moose Jaws 32 ounce uh, Nalgene container that is fairly light, holds a lot of water, so I think I'm gonna take that regardless. I plan on pretty much carrying two bottles of water at all time whenever I run across the water source, fill those back up. I have my uh, spoon, my long spork pot holder to lift this off after it's Hot. In the center of the table, we have personal care items. We have a first aid bag here and toothbrush, toothpaste, some Q-tips, some wipes, uh, deodorant and uh, anti-chafing, chapstick, some camp suds, biodegradable soap, and 100% deep bug spray. And then this shares the bag for Tactical, so tactical and personal care. There will be, there's a patch kit in case something happens to my air mattress. We've got some paracord. We've got this bee free filter. 
some plastic ties, some aqua tabs for water purification, a Ben's head net for bugs, the bag that it all goes in, which will also hold all the personal care items, two bag Ziploc bags here to seal up trash, some duct tape in case we need that to repair something, a knife, a clip, a headlamp, and two batteries with a fresh battery in the headlamp, so that should be enough there. These are the food items here. I've got uh, the first bag for Thursday through Saturday. The next bag will be Sunday through Monday. And then the last bag here will be snacks for midday for all, all the days. Over here, the red bag will hold all of the electronics. I have a solar battery bank, some various charging cables to charge everything up, two additional battery banks here, and then the GoPro camera, some storage, Pelican storage for the micro SD cards, and a tripod so I can, I have a snap mount so I can move very quickly from what will be on my chest to either a tripod situation or a selfie stick. Next, I'm gonna show you the spreadsheet that shows all the items listed in their weights and how I divided it up. In exploring the spreadsheet a little bit more, what we have are three sections. We have base weight items. We have non-base weight additional items. And then you have other supplies that I'm either wearing or installed on me like camera mounts or that sort of thing, hat, uh, anything that I'm wearing. We go to the back of the top here. These are the things that you saw all laid out on the table, like my backpack, which is a Mountain Laurel Designs Exodus. I have it categorized just in case I want to see, you know, how much weight do I have to buy gear, my shelter, my kitchen stuff, that sort of thing. You can see the category here. I put the weight in ounces, and then I have a formula that converts it to pounds. And then whether I include it or not, because sometimes, well, I, you know, I think I might want it. And then I, maybe at the last minute, I'll, well, you know, it was on the list, but because it's not going to rain two days, it might only rain 30% chance one day. I won't put the raincoat in, or I won't put the, the backpack rain cover in. That sort of thing. And then I might have some additional notes off to the right. So as I move through this list here, uh, we've got just under 12 pounds of base weight. And you can see here, I said no. I, I There are some few things that I said that I may or may not take. Well, I didn't choose to take the Q-tips, the carabiner, the deodorant, uh, the backpack rain cover, and that was in the base gear items. So that saying no here subtracts this weight off of this total down here. So my base weight was just under 12 pounds. And then uh, I go into the next section and my non-base weight items like my clothing or jackets or that sort of thing are all here my food and uh there was one item here that i chose not to take and i was going to take my ear pods but i chose not to so i said no to that so that was additional just a little over 11 and a half pounds i add that onto the base weight and i get just under 24 pounds of gear that i carried with me and then the stuff that I wear or have installed on me in some way or on top of my head or whatever, these are uh, those types of items. And uh, I think at the last minute I chose not to take my wallet. Um, I meant to take my Tilly hat, but I forgot it. So I ended up having about just a little over eight pounds that I was wearing on me for a total of... Uh, just over 31 and a half pounds. So that's the spreadsheet and those are the items that I 
that I took there. So that's what that looks like. As I mentioned earlier, Fred is uh, on this trip with me and this was his idea. Fred uh, prefers to hike and backpack versus uh, my preference to paddling. We did paddle the Michigan Inland Waterway during the month of May, which has yet to make it to video. You'll be seeing it out in the future. And this was uh, Fred's concept, the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. I took the route out of all trails. I exported it out and then I imported it into Gaia GPS and uh, using recreation.gov's website to see what campsites were available and what we could reasonably do each day. I planned out the different campsites where we would stay each night and then made the day one through day five route plans. That's kind of how I went about doing this. So I just wanted to give you an idea of how I went about getting this trip and getting the GPX track and actually planning the trip. So uh, at least you had that idea in case you're planning on doing something like this, I thought that might help. And with that, I would like to thank you for stopping by the channel and checking this video out. This will be f five additional videos, day one through day five, that will show the backpacking hike. And uh, each day will be in its entirety. Uh, it will be uh, sped up to uh, help uh, with time, but it will show you every part of the trail. So that's the plan. So until next week, take care and thank you.